man, who would have ever thought that Logic would be this good? <laughs> it's really good now. Bolo! What's good you guys, it's your boy Bolo back at it again. Before we get started with the video, make sure you guys hit that like, make sure you guys hit that subscribe, make sure you guys comment, and make sure you guys turn on those post notifications so you will know the next time I have another video available. And hit that thumbs up if you like the video or hit that thumbs down if you don't like it. I really don't care. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about the new Logic 10.5 update and especially the sampler. Now, this thing is actually really good and I can tell that they kind of bit from Presonus a little bit on this because their sampler and Presonus sampler is eerily similar. And even with the whole drag and drop functions that's going on with it, it's very similar as well. Either way, Logic has did a major overhaul and the sampler is very good. So I'm not gonna waste too much time talking about everything. I really just wanna show you guys how to use this sampler to use it very fast and very efficiently in your Logic sessions. Also, shout out to Splice.com. I will be using some loops to show you guys how to chop up loops with the new sampler in Logic Pro. And if you do not have an account with Splice.com, I highly recommend it. It starts off at $7.99 and you get 100 credits. And if you do not use all of those credits in one month, the extra credits that you have left over rolls over to the next month. I got like 1,200 credits and I have the $7.99 plan. So if you guys wanna go ahead and get a Splice.com account, go ahead and click the link in the bio. This is my personal link to Splice.com. It helps me out as well. So go ahead and get you a Splice.com account today and you will not be disappointed. All right, let's go ahead and get to the video and let's try to make this quick because y'all need to make some fire beats. Let's, let's do this. So we're in Logic Pro X right now with the new 10.5 update and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually import a loop first and then we'll do drum second. Now there's two ways you can import a loop. You can actually import it through the inspector side right here. As you can see, this is the inspector. You can go to all files and as you can see, I already have my drum kit, the Bolo Producer 2020 kit, which you guys need to get if you don't have it. Or you can go ahead and find like your samples on your desktop. This is gonna be your best friend when you're sampling. Now, you can do it like this, or what you can do is, if you have a Splice account, of course you'll have the desktop app, and you can just go right here, and let's say, hmm, let's just pick a loop. All right, that's dope. So you can actually take the loop and you can do it the old school way and just slide the loop inside of here like that. It has tempo information, all that stuff. So we can import that tempo information and automatically it has the uh, tempo set for 70 BPMs because the actual loop is actually set for 70 BPM. So when we play it now. So it's already pretty much set and it's already set up for flex time. So now if we go through here and we wanna put this on poly and then it's gonna analyze everything. So now if we even turn the tempo up, the new algorithms in Logic sounds really good too. So now we play it. And we can even go faster. We can even go slower with the sample. And as you can hear, the new algorithms are really good. You don't really hear like clicks and pops and stuff like that. Everything just sounds really good. So that's one way of sampling. And uh, you can use that for like loops and stuff like that if you want to have like a really quick loop to go in and you want to change certain things. And you can even transpose the sample or whatever right here on the side. You can transpose it or do whatever. But let's go ahead and get to the actual sampler. So let's go ahead and take that out and delete that one. So now what we're gonna do is, instead of putting the sample inside of this black area right here, we're gonna slide the sample right here to this gray area where the instruments show up. So let's go back into Slice. Let's go ahead and grab the sample and drag it right here. Now we have dragged that audio file in here. As you can see, we have options and it shows all of the samplers that we have. It has a quick sampler, original, a quick sampler, optimized, a drum machine designer, alchemy, and you know, all the other good stuff. But we're worried about the sampler. Now, the quick sampler original basically means what it says. It's just the original. It doesn't mess with the sample. It doesn't do anything about it. The optimized actually analyzes the sample 
it analyzes for volume and for like silence and a few other things. So, you know, if you have a very loud sample, it will turn it down and it will get rid of the silence of the sample. And sometimes you don't want to do it. Somebody like me, I kind of like to manipulate my samples the way I want. So I always like to click on the quick sampler. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. And when you do that, it already comes up spliced up. At the end of the day, we want to have a better representation of our slices in here. And this is definitely not it. So right now the mode is actually on transient and we don't want to do the transient mode on here. But what we're going to do now is we're going to put this on equal divisions. So right here on equal divisions, as you can see, it kind of lined up pretty cool. And let's go ahead and kind of readjust this a little bit. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job. As you can see, it spliced it up kind of like it's on a grid a little bit. So when we play it back on our keyboard, so as you can see it is a very very quick tool to do this so now we already have the sample and we can go ahead and just splice it up and make a beat with it now let's go ahead and do that but one thing that i like to do when i'm doing these samples especially when i'm splicing certain samples up i may want to move these to kind of get right up on that so sometimes i just kind of move it on these transients right here to make sure that they're kind of right there locked in on them and you know everything is not perfect but it's really good and another thing i like to do is i like to go right here to the poly and i like to put this on mono so it won't be two samples playing at one time even if i mess up so let's go ahead and just record something real quick just to show you guys how it works after you do the slice mode. All right, so I kind of messed up a little bit, but as you can see, I came up with a nice little two bar loop and here it goes. As you can see it's pretty cool so let's go ahead and copy that real quick so now we have a splice loop using the sampler so that's actually very easy to do as you can see all we had to do is go in there and put in our sample points and it worked out fairly easy all you have to do is just drag and drop the sample in and you're pretty much done now as you can see these are kind of on or you might have to move them around but everything works pretty cool now let's work with some drums right now so the same way applies we can either go through like our finder right down here and then we can go ahead and add the samples like that but for drums the best thing to do is go right here into your uh, files right here where it says project media and files right here and I actually have one already set for my bowler producer drum kit make sure you guys get that and let's go ahead and add a clap so let's go ahead and add a clap and then the good thing about using it this way is, especially for you FL Studio users, you can actually preview the sounds and just drag and drop the same way. Now, the only thing is you will not be able to preview sounds that are 32-bit. So if it's a 16-bit sound, you'll be able to hear it. If it's a 24-bit sound, you'll be able to hear it. But if it's 32-bit, you won't be able to hear it. And some of my sounds are 32-bit. So if you play it, you might not hear it. And then other ones you'll be able to hear. But I know what my sounds sound like, so it's all good. So you can still drag them in either way. So let me go ahead and drag in this clap. We're going to drag it right here. We're going to put it as a quick sample original. And then boom, it's already done. So now it's going to play up and down the octave. And it's already done. Incredible, incredible. And now we don't really have to do anything else to it, but just record it. So let's go ahead and record it. So we got a little loop there. Let's go ahead and just add that in there. Sounds good. So now let's go ahead and add a hi-hat. So let's go ahead and open up the clothes hats. Let's go ahead and do this one right here. Let's add that in there. We're going to do this at original again. And let's add in a hat. Usually I would just go ahead and... Well, let me show you guys how I do it, because some of you guys 
have seen me do this before, but I'm gonna show you guys how I do my hats on here. And what I usually do is I create a new MIDI region. And what I do is I go inside the MIDI region, let's close this out, and I select the brush tool right here. And then I turn this to like a 1 8th or 1 16th note. And then I just hit command and I go to every, which one I want. And then I just drag this over. All right, it's simple. And then what you can do too is you can change these to like a, a one, like a one sixteenth, and then you can, and then you can actually go underneath here and then brush in some more notes. Actually, let's do a triplet on here. So you can just hold down and it'll automatically change to a to a eraser tool. You can just add that in there. Sounds cool. So we'll leave it like that for right now. And then we'll just kind of just copy that over. And then add that in there. And then lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a bass. So let's go ahead and go back over here. Go back to my drum kit. Let's add a bass in here real quick. I know what that one sounds like. Let's put that in there. And let's go ahead and just use the original one again and then now that's incredible but one thing you want to do with all your bases so you won't have that bass overlap like this because there's multiple bases playing you always want to put your bases at mono right here put that on mono and then now we are good, so we can play the uh, play the song, and we can find whatever key the bass is in, and we can play it like a nice little bass line. Very, very, very simple bass line. Just want to do this for two tutorial purposes only, so. Don't trip. And so now we're just gonna repeat that. And now we have a pretty decent beat. Maybe let's add like a kick or something in there. Like this kick is very loud I just played. It's a very loud kick. So when you have a kick like this, what you wanna do is instead of using the regular sample, you might wanna use the optimized one because now it would detect volume and other stuff like that. So since this one is very loud, let's go ahead and use the optimized one and as you can see, it took out all of the silence and it set like a, a nice little point right here where the, the kick actually ends and it actually turned the kick down. So now when I play it, set a decent, a really decent volume right now. So let's go ahead and add that in there. is a very simple beat using the new sampler. Okay, as you can see, it is very easy to sample in the new Logic Pro X with the 10.5 update. I am super excited about this because I've already done videos years ago about several workarounds to do this, and they finally implemented something that is very quick and very easy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys learned something from this video. And like I always say, Peace out.